Did you know that chocolate is toxic to animals? Even a small amount can cause vomiting and restlessness. If dogs have enough of it, it can actually cause seizures and potentially heart failure. In cats, it can be even worse and in some cases causes death. When I was a vet tech, there were many times I had to explain things to people and make sure they understood that something was toxic to their pets. Most people would just say, oh, okay, I didn't know that. I won't do that anymore. But I distinctly remember there was this one lady who had a really small dog, like a chihuahua, and she enjoyed giving the dog chocolate chip cookies. Of course, I cringed because I knew it doesn't take much chocolate to poison a dog. I explained it to her. It's not a good thing for them at all. She laughed it off and said, oh, he loves them. I've been doing it for a while. He's been fine, you know, basically. And then it made me think of all the dangers of sin and the way we live our lives sometimes. So, you know, we've done this for a while. It'll be fine. It's going to be okay because nothing bad has happened yet. You see, the effects of chocolate on an animal don't always present right away. This is based on many different factors. Some animals even have minimum symptoms, so their own owner thinks that they're fine. In this lady's case, maybe the dog is fine because he's only having minor symptoms or she thinks they're normal for her dog, and she never noticed the first symptoms of a problem. But as time goes on, she may not be so lucky because her dog maybe will get to a point where he can't shake all the effects of the toxin, and maybe the damage has been done by now. Sin has the same effect in our lives. We start out doing something that seems harmless or it hasn't hurt us before. There aren't any obvious effects, so what's the big deal? But the problem is when we come into agreement with what it is, it will shape our world and our worldview. The more we allow and tolerate those sort of things that would cause us to fall back on a, our old ways and fall in our walk with Christ, the harder it is to stay on that path. It seems simple and controllable now. It's just a small lie or a single cuss. But what if this moment is your last chance? What if you don't get another day or time to make it right? Turn back now while you still have the chance. Focus on regrowing a new mind with your Savior so that you can be equipped to face the darkness. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 5, 8 that be vigilant, and watch, your adversary the devil is roaring as a lion, seeking whom he may devour. This is true in the wild and the spiritual battle before us. They will pick off a weak or sick animal if they can. A lion studies its prey. This is how the devil and his minions get an advantage on us, by studying and watching until they see a weak point or exploit a situation. It doesn't matter if it's pro this or that. They will find a way to t twist it and exploit it. It is easier to keep the old way than to renew the mind for a new path. Every time we have a bad thought over and over again, it makes the path stronger. It makes it easier to fall down. And even if you don't want to think about in the context of what the Bible tells us is true, psychology has also reinforced that fact that if you have negative thoughts and you get more and more of them, well, guess what? It makes it harder and harder to think positively or in a a new way, basically feeling trapped. So whenever the Bible talks about renewing your mind, this is exactly why we need to do it daily. Most of us are working against years of programming that have had us feeling or thinking a certain way about ourselves or others or thinking about God in an untrue way. When I was in high school, I had a band teacher that would always say, we are what we repeatedly do. If we practice excellence, then we will be the best. Now, not that we will be the best in our walk with Christ, and that's not necessarily the aim, but the aim is to keep reading and to keep resisting sin, because if we can practice holiness one step at a time, it will become easier and easier to stay in that frame of mind. It will also change your line of thinking that makes it easier so that you don't have to delve into those things you thought were so fun and harmless before. After a while, we'll find and realize that conforming our minds to the new identity in Christ is how we overcome sin and our past. We are a new creation, and we only get better with the Holy Spirit's help and practice through discipline. And then eventually we'll find that, hey, I don't really want to do any of those things anymore. They're really not as fun as I thought they were. 
and sometimes even get a little bit ashamed of what we used to do or what we used to think was cool. I've definitely had that experience as well. But don't despair because once again, like I said, just keep pursuing him and he'll fulfill all the needs that you have. And I pray this blesses you in Jesus' name. Amen.